He told my father that you shouldn't believe in the Bible, you shouldn't believe in Christianity. He said, that's to enslave you. That, is, that was given you to you to enslave you. Now, I'm not knocking the church or Christianity. But I have to recognize what worked in this formula that was used by this man to make a new people of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and those who would follow him. I have to recognize that. Okay. <clears throat> Because I know there are some Christians, I've met some Christians, some very wonderful Christians, very wise Christians, and they know how to separate stories and fiction from truth. <laughs> All Christians are not living in the dark. <laughs> so I know that, you know. Um, <clears throat> and as long as we have alive people in heaven watching over us, we can't fare too bad on earth. <laughs> but, but what, what, what about what, what about those who get separated from even their help coming from the live people up there, <laughs> like most of us have done? Most of us, even the preachers, and I hope I know some of you are here today. Some of you are here wearing Muslim names. Some of you Christian preachers. <laughs> I know you very well. You're here today. You're here every time I speak. Every time it's announced that I'm going to speak, you're here. Uh, I don't blame you. You're, you're doing right to come, brother. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Some of you all have gotten out of touch yourself with the spirit that you should be in and with the mental, mental, disposition that you should be in. You've gotten out of touch with it. You're no longer respecting God as he should be respected. You preachers. You're no longer respecting scripture, revealed scripture, as it should be respected. You're preaching for results in the people. You're preaching to, to make the people happy. You're preaching to make the people give you money. You're preaching to make the people love you. You're too selfish. To get back connected with the true human spirit and human life that God wants for us, we got to stop being selfish. God is charit charitable, and he created us to be charitable. God loves to give, and he created us to love giving. We have to love giving more than we love getting. And when we love giving more than we love getting, God will be with us. We'll come into the right spirit and the people will love us even more. And if the world is intended for you, you'll get it. But you are not going to get anything that God doesn't want you to have. You can be holy and saintly and the best person in the world. And even God loves you for being so good. But if God knows that a lot of money is going to make your life worse or put you in a position to make somebody else's life worse, maybe God won't want that for you. Maybe you let the Satan and some of Satan followers have that. Yes, praise be to God. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, praise be to God. <clears throat> yes, so here is the great wisdom of Mr. Farad. He said, I'm going to kill history. I'm going to destroy history. And that's what he did. He destroyed history for my father and for his followers. He told us, don't believe history. Then he attempted to give us the history. And he did the same thing that the world did to the people. He gave us a history that was myth. He said the black man is God. 
Now you know if you believe you're God, who you going who who you going to go to for questions? <laughs> who you going to go to for answers to questions? He said you God. Now where you going to go to have somebody answer your questions? The man was wise. Wise. Powerful psychology. Powerful psychology. If I can get these dumb, uneducated blacks to believe this myth and they hold on to it, when they ever get themselves together, they're going to be independent. You following me? And he said, I come on July the 4th, the Independence Day of the United for the People of America, July the 4th. That is to say, I come for the same thing you all got, you white folks in America. You got your independence, but you got a black people here that come from Africa, that you brought from Africa, and they are not independent because they are not in their natural minds. They are living under the burden of darkness. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to waken them, wake them up mentally. And when they find themselves, they are going to be standing on their own ground and thinking independently. And thinking independently. Praise be to Allah. It worked. He killed history. He destroyed the, the history that we learned in school. He destroyed it. Told us don't believe a word of it. He said the world was not began as they say it began. And now, let me address myth again. The Roman people, they have the story of their beginning as Romans. How do they know their beginning? Who knows their beginning? Nobody knows their beginning. Like we don't know our birth. Our family, our parents have to tell us our birth. Who witnesses his own birth and can remember it? Nobody. So no people know their beginning. They know only what was written, what they learned later. And God knew that, that all of us would want to know, where do we begin? Well, in Africa. Well, how much that can tell us nowadays? That can't tell us very much. And the way we've been scattered, scattered and the different places they got us, uh, from which they got us. <clears throat> we don't know whether to go to Ghana, or Sudan. One guy said he knew where to go, and he found Kunti Kinti. <laughs> Alex Haley, who wrote the popular book, you know, that very popular book, Alex Haley. Well, when he said Kunti Kinti, I said, yeah. I say he's beginning in myth, not reality. <laughs> For Kunti Kenti means Kunti you, you were. Kenti you were, twice, fem masculine and feminine. feminine. <laughs> so, that, that's supposed to be the, the name of the person he found, you know. All fabricated. Now, I, now, you know, you all can believe it if you want to, but I believe his connection with his ancestors was fabricated. Yes. Not, I've got a great book though, I bought it and, not, and I don't regret that I bought it and read it. <clears throat> a great book and a great story that we saw in movies and TV. Great story. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so uh, myth, myth uh, uh, is the beginning of most people's history. All nations history began in myth. The Egyptians history began in myth. The Romans' history began with two wolves, well, the wolf, pardon me, wolf, two boys and a wolf. Two boys were separated from their parents, and they were found by a she-wolf. And the she-wolf nursed, nursed them, the babies. They were babies, needed to be nursed, infants. And the she-wolf nursed them, nursed them, and they got healthy and got strong. And one of the brothers was a little bit too silly. One was serious minded, the other silly minded. So they came to the city, uh, pardon me, to the place where Rome would be established. And 
one brother was able to cross over and get into that area, the other brother was not. So one left behind, the silly one was left behind. Isn't that a great story for the Roman people? To tell them that you all are descended from the smart one, not the dumb one, not the dull one. You all are descended, <laughs> you all are descended the children of the mature one, not the immature one. Is that, that's a nice story for the ego of the Roman people. So if they did it, what's wrong with Mr. Rod doing it for us? So their beginning is in a story, in, a, in fiction, in a lie, not the truth, you know? And as I said, so it is for every other people. Uh, we came from Africa, and Africa was never united. Uh, and, and it's not united yet. Africa was never united. They are identified by tribal, tribal language and tribal ways, folk ways. That's how they identify. The people of Egypt are mostly the same. The Egyptians are mostly the same. But the people of uh, Africa vary so much, so widely. South Africans, North Africans, the Bush people, they vary so widely. And they have so many different languages that they speak. And maybe that's the reason why the continent is in such bad shape today. Because they haven't found unity. Now it really hurts me to know that Christianity was there, still there. Christianity and Islam, these two great religions, are both on these continents. But it has not yet stood the Africans up as a people, as a people of the continent. These two great religions have not stood them up and united them as citizens on equal plane with each other. Our founding fathers did it for the citizens of this country, but no one has been able to do it yet for the people who live on that continent we call Africa the dark continent. It's still dark. Not with people. It's dark with ignorance. Ignorance of their true calling in this world, in this material world. God willing, there will come a change there soon, I hope. A big change. Even if I have to go over there with a new myth. And preach a story to, wait, to get them to have faith in themselves. And a higher evaluation of human life. See, when you get the truth from God, you get the true evaluation of human life. And once you have your true evaluation, you just can't treat yourself like you a dog or an inferior thing. No, you can't do that. You respect yourself. When you get true evaluation of the self, the high self that God made when he made a human being, then you will be careful not to mistreat yourself. That was another thing Mr. Farad said, no self. Know yourself. And he didn't say yourself as a black man. He said, it, he, asked, he gave us a kind of catechism, like, they give the, like the Catholic Church has. He said, and who, 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 who is my own self? What, what is my own self? Then he gives the answer, like a catechism. My own self is a righteous Muslim. So he told us to identify ourselves as Muslim. Now, after studying this religion over many years now, since I became aware of what Mr. Farad taught us, because my mother had me memorize those things, not just me, the Muslim sisters, the grown up, had, had themselves and their children memorize those things. You had to commit it to memory, know it by heart. That's what we used to say, by heart, know it by heart. So, anyway, since then, I have studied it. And in Islam, in the Quran and the teachings of, of Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him. We have two definitions for Muslim. Or if I was writing a dictionary, I would put two entries for Muslim. First entry would be 
believers in God and believers in Muhammad as the last prophet with the final revelation, the Quran. Uh, just a short, that would uh, be a short, uh, the short entry for that num entry number one. What would be the second one? Muslim, the original unspoiled nature of every human being. The first Adam, the first un and unspoiled, the original, the first, and the unspoiled nature of every human being.